a lot, man. Very, very exciting uh, uh, sharing. Wow, I learned a lot today myself even. Uh, wow, there's so much transformation in, in this whole downtown area. It's, it's so much to talk about. I'm so excited every time I, I, I listen to, you know, the, the, the upcoming projects and uh, uh, what's going to be coming up in the whole area. It's, it's really amazing. Hi, good morning, everybody. I'm uh, Leon Chua. Uh, I'll be covering more on the MOR site, which is a uh, Marina One residence. Uh, I will most likely talk to you about the history of the whole Marina Bay. And then we go a bit to be aware of the numbers. And then uh, from there, I'll also pick pick out a few units for you to push. Uh, why why these units are, are selected and uh, what are the selling points and USPs of uh, Marina One residents. And then later I'll hand over to Jean and she'll brief a lot a lot a little bit more on the uh, 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 the book projects. Okay, thank you. Just hold on. Let me just share my screen. Can everybody see? Hold on, let me just pull out. Okay. So yeah, uh, I was one of the members who founded uh, Last Team in 2015. This is our fifth year anniversary. Uh, I'm also the lead IC for Marina One Residence at St. Thomas and also the uh, project IC for Riviere. These are the projects under my, 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 my care. Uh, these are my babies. I really, really take care of them every day. Uh, further, okay. Everyone's asking, what is PropMax closing in uh, uh, Marina One Residence? Everyone like to get for. So yeah, we have uh, gathered all this information. These are all the circuit breaker closings for the last five or six weeks, I would say. Uh, as you can see, a lot of people like to say that, oh yeah, foreign investors, foreign investors. But actually, no, you look at the data. Singaporeans are actually buying. Why? You know Singaporeans like the value for money. And they are buying, most of them, one bedroom, uh, two plus study, two bedroom. And the quantum is really, really quite decent. Uh, in terms of the per square foot, which is on the second last column, this is the entry level they are going in. Uh, even on the high floors, low floors, uh, they are still committing. Uh, and on top of that, we still have some more uh, working case uh, still coming, which Jean will brief you later. Uh, yeah, so these are the kind of data and you know where to look for buyers, you know, uh, where to reach, reach out to them. Okay, I will now talk a bit about Marina, the history. Uh, we have put out some photos, previously also shared by Tammy uh, about two weeks back, uh, how, how Marina Bay has truly transformed uh, into what it is today, and it's still transforming. That's the amazing thing, non-stop transforming. Uh, this is the old Marina Bay. I think most of you all here will not even recognize uh, how this, uh, this picture. I don't recognize it myself, for sure. Uh, this is probably taken in the 50s, although I can't verify it. And then throughout the years, uh, 19, 1977, as you can see on the lower, 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 lower center, there's the Nico Highway. This is even before Suntec was even built. Yeah, as you can see, Marina Bay Sands is obviously not there. Uh, South Beach residents on the right, the swimming pool. Can you see the swimming pool there? That's where uh, South Beach residents is there now. Yeah, they're all not even there. And if you take it further, this is where Marina Bay Sands Gardens by the Bay is. Obviously, this doesn't look like this at all now. And this is not very long ago. This is actually about 33 years ago. Yeah, further down, this is the Marina Bay about 20 years ago. And then now at the bottom screen, which is how beautiful it is. And on top of that, it's still transforming. Please take note, we are not even near where the government wants to be. Yeah, uh, that's why it's so exciting to be sharing, which I'll go on further later, uh, what is going to be happening in, in, the, in the near future. Okay, so as you know, Marina Bay is kind of like the new, the new CBD. Uh, what we all know as, as CBD in the 80s was actually Tanjong Baga. Okay, we have the conservation house, we have Wally, we have all the uh, pretty older CBD buildings. Uh, initially, this is how the, it was started in the early Singapore business days. Uh, as, as, as of course, more and more buildings and more congested they are, we started to move towards Shenton Way Raffles Place. Uh, most of you all will know this place, uh, Raffles Place MRT, Shenton Way, Cecil Street. You know, as you go there, you see all the buildings are a little bit newer than Tanjong Baga generally. Of course, uh, there's not much residential there. So 
a lot of offices was moving towards Raffles space and it got a little bit more congested. So governments still want to expand the whole CBD. So they actually move towards Marina Bay. So in the from 2010 to all the way to today, you will see big, big, uh, big office uh, buildings like Asia Square, Marina One Tower, Marina Bay Financial Center, all the big banks, big corporations, MNCs, uh, they are all, 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 all in this area. Okay, and and and, and uh, this was taken in a uh, URA gallery uh, after the circuit breaker. If uh, URA gallery uh, opens up again. I highly recommend you guys go down and take a look and see how much is going to be transformed. Yeah, and it's really, really, really wonderful uh, because you can really see what the government is trying to do to this whole area in terms of the whole downtown core, including the uh, great Southern Waterfront City. This whole project is going to be the biggest transformation in Singapore. And I really, really, really uh, strongly uh, believe that the government will actually deliver what they actually say. So on this, on this, uh, as you can see my pointer, uh, this was the previously the, the OCBD. It stretches down all the way to Raffles Place and it got a little bit congested. Can you see all the bu existing buildings here? Okay, all the, all the wooden blocks here are future developments, okay? And Marina One residence sits here, okay? We have two uh, unblocked views, okay? Uh, the gardens by the front and the back, Okay, to give us a bit of unblocked view in the near future. Currently, it's sea view. Okay, what I'm trying to say is there are still a lot of developments around here which yet to be built. Yes. Okay. Uh, so how Marina One came about was actually was a very controversial land. Uh, we were trying to take back the, the Malayan railway land uh, in Tanjong Paga. So in the exchange to that and three other plots in Bukit Timah, which is also known as the current railway corridor, uh, some of you are known as the green corridor, uh, we gave Malaysia, uh, 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 what's it, in exchange to that, uh, these four pieces of land, we gave them a uh, dual residence, that piece of land, and also Marina One residence. Of course, Duo is fully sold out now, and uh, we are concentrating more on a uh, Marina One residence. Yes. So it's a it's a it's a tie up between uh, Kazana National, which is the Malaysian Sovereign Funds, and uh, Tamase Holding, and they hold sixty percent share. Singapore Tamase Holdings hold uh, forty percent, as stated in this article. Yeah. So that's the perspective from the front, Marina One residents. Uh, this is actually how it looks like when you drive past there. I'm going to quickly show you a, uh, how the 3D, 3D model, a uh, short one minute clip, so that you guys roughly know uh, how it actually looks like. Friendly. Sorry, hello. I think most of you cannot see the video, right? Hold on.
Okay, sorry. Yes, can everybody see the screen back now? Okay, yeah, so the video was like that. Uh, very, very exciting, very, very nice. Uh, for those who haven't seen, it's actually, the, the units are actually ready already. It TOP uh, back in 2017. So it's ready, ready for renting, ready for rent out. Uh, if you all need the video to be sent to your buyers to let them have a look at the preview, uh, please uh, contact one of our taggers. Uh, any one of them, they're all highly qualified. So yeah, Marina One, uh, it's a joint venture between uh, Singapore Kazana and uh, Tomasi Holdings. Uh, the architect is German, uh, Christ Christoph Ingelhoven. I can never pronounce that properly. Okay, it's a five in one degraded project. Okay, consists of an office, four MRT lines, just like Midtown Bay, the retail podium, the urban park that sits in the middle of the office and the residence, uh, and of course, the residential itself. And of course, we also have the live, work, and play uh, uh, concept. Okay, this is the URA planning. Uh, as you can see just now, the URA gallery, uh, that was actually the plan, the kind of plan view. This is also a plan view in a graphic mode. Uh, all these white sites are yet to be built. Okay, uh, most concerns will be buyers. Hey, you know, all, everything's going to be everything's going to be blocked. You know, in the near future. But hey, it's, it's the CBD. Buildings are going to be surfacing throughout time. Uh, through, 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 through time, and by the time uh, everything is up, yours, your your building will be actually appreciated by then, and it's time to exit. Uh, just like you look at the sale, look at Marina Bay uh, residences. Uh, they all made their good, 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 good appreciation back then, and then and Marina One Resident is going to be the next uh, wave. Okay. Yes, like I said, we have four MRT lines coming through. Uh, we have the North South, Thompson East Coast, Circle, and also the Downtown. So connectivity, connectivity, connectivity throughout the whole of Singapore. Even people coming into your home or coming to office is very, very convenient. Okay, uh, I think Tammy also touched a little bit on the underground pedestrian network earlier. Uh, I'm going more a little bit in depth. Uh, uh, articles are shown how they are going to have like a mini underground city so that we don't have to walk under the hot sun. Uh, 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 and, and this was published back in about a year back. Uh, and they feature Marina Bay having this uh, underground pedestrian network. Actually, if you visit the location, some of the underground pedestrian network excuse me, it's actually uh, built already, but some parts are not connected properly yet, but they are on, ongoing and ongoing uh, as we speak. Okay, this is the blueprint from URA. Uh, as you can see, they have already did their analysis. Uh, you look at the, the blue color lines. Okay, the blue color lines is what URA actually analyzed the 
current activity, ge current generating use, uh, which is a lot of people are using, uh, a lot of traffic flow coming in terms of just pedestrians. Okay, and what the orange line is, uh, the government is trying to work towards already work, working and already done to connect all the orange lines together so that the, it will convenient the pedestrian even more. Yeah. Uh, this is just an extension more towards the uh, uh, Marina Bay Sand site. As you can see, the orange lines are connecting almost every part of the whole city uh, within, within the Marina Bay area. So in terms of uh, your the tenants or your residents coming in the area, they can just walk down to the, to the underground pedestrian network and continue walking without a sweat. Yeah, in the comfort of the aircon. Okay. Uh, of course, everyone's talking about the Great Southern Waterfront. I want to touch what did the uh, Lee Sien Long actually talk about. It's a very short clip, uh, which was which was spoken in uh, last year's National Day rally. Beyond protecting ourselves from rising seas, we also have long-term plans to remake and take full advantage of our coastline. One of these plans is the Greater Southern Waterfront. I first spoke about this in the 2013 rally. Since then, we've worked out more definite ideas. And let me first sketch out the overall shape. The GSW comprises 30 kilometers of our southern coastline from gardens by the bay east all the way to Pase Panjang. And it's about 2,000 hectares of land. It's six times the size of Marina Bay, or in other terms, about two pongos. The GSW includes the PSA city terminals, which are at Tanjong Paga, at Brani, and at Keppel. And they also include the Pase Panjang terminals. By 2027, the city terminals will go to Tuas, where we are building a new port. And later on, in 2040, the Pasir Panjang terminal will also go to Tuas port. And this will free up prime land for redevelopment. It will be an opportunity to reshape the Greater Southern Waterfront into a new place to live, work and play. And let me start with live. Here is Keppel Golf Course, Keppel Club. It's close to two MRT stations. Yes, so that was just a very uh, brief clip on uh, what Lee Sen Long shared actually last year. Uh, if you want to go more about it, go into the PMO website. You can find out more about the Great Southern Waterfront and its progression uh, upcoming. Sorry, where's my cursor? Hold on. So yes, this is the whole uh, infrastructure of the Great Southern Waterfront. Uh, as you can see, Marina South is on the blue on the right side. Uh, uh, and the red is the, actually the, the Great Southern Waterfront project. Okay, uh, like Lee Xia Long said, it's six times, uh, the six times the size of Marina Bay, which is huge. Uh, to put it also into perspective, it's uh, twice the size of uh, Pongo. And you know how big Pongo is. It's really, really quite big. Yeah. This is a uh, taken off URA. Uh, 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 I really hope I can see the day where Singapore turns like that. Uh, it reminds me like a, a scene from Tron, a really futuristic, really, really high tech. Uh, 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 I hope everyone will leave you today to see this uh, vision of Singapore. So yeah, rejuvenations for the CBD. As you can see, uh, as, as, as government is trying to uh, uh, make CBD progress to the next level, they are also encouraging a lot of mixed use, uh, mixed development. Uh, this is uh, 
the whole topic about today, what we're going to talk about. Uh, uh, they're going to incentivize mixed development within CBD. <clears throat> okay, uh, why mixed D? Uh, in order to create a well-balanced uh, residential and office market, to create a very stable uh, tenants market, tenancy market, or rather rental market, uh, it's, it's more feasible to have a, a, a mixed development because there's also an equal balance of offices and also an equal balance of residential uh, uh, so that there won't be a, a supply and demand uh, flaw uh, whether it's, it's too much tenants or too little, uh, too much uh, vacancy uh, within the residential units. And it also makes more feasible. And also studies have said that uh, people like the whole mixed development concept, especially in the city, is really very convenient. Uh, we are going through a, towards a lesser driving uh, within the city. That's why government is fully promoting this uh, incentive. Okay. Uh, more on Marina One now. Uh, this is also was taken off the video. Uh, it is really very nice. You can look at the, the wave, the greenery, how it integrate within the modern and the greenery lifestyle within the development. Hold on, I'm losing my cursor. Uh, hold on, can I just... Sorry, I lost my I lost I lost my mouse. So, oh yeah, it's back here. Okay, so yeah, Marina One residence, two towers, uh, predominantly Park Tower, which was launched uh, about three years back, or rather, sorry, two years back. Sorry, three years back. No, no, no. Twenty one was bought, uh, launched in two zero one four. My mistake. Okay. Uh, now we are predominantly selling uh, Garden Tower, which is a uh, Tower Twenty Three, uh, uh, which is why a lot of problems are pushing. But there are still units left inside. Uh, there are still a few units left in a uh, Tower 21, predominantly the three bedroom and four bedroom, which I later will show you, which is still very undervalued. Okay, it's a 99 year pro uh, project uh, with effective from uh, 2011, 1st July. With this, this 99 year is also the same day as a uh, dual residence. This was the day they signed the agreement in exchange for the railway land. Okay, TOP in 2017. But only obtains uh, delisted from COH in September 19, which is last year. Uh, hence, they introduced the deferred payment in October last year. Because only after COH, then you can also introduce a, a, a deferred payment. So we are actually in the resale, resale stage now, uh, in terms of the developer to the consumer uh, agreement. Okay, and on top of that, uh, we have also a lot of price, attractive price adjustment which is very, very important. Okay, this is Tower 23, the availability. Uh, look at the balance. Uh, as you can see, we are only left with a couple of uh, two bedrooms left, two and two plus study. Three bedrooms, we still left quite a bit. Uh, four bedrooms are very popular among the, the, the foreign buyers. They, they are always looking for large space in CCR. Hence, they are only left five units. Uh, the, one, the one and one plus study is still very, very, uh, there's still a lot of units to be, choose, uh, to be chosen. And of course, uh, on each tower, there are four penthouses and uh, each tower own, still have left three units of penthouses. Okay. And this is the uh, availability in tower 21. We have, sold, we have sold all our one bedroom and two bedrooms, only left 16 units of three bedrooms, six units of four bedrooms, and of course the three penthouses. So yes, I'll show you later the prices and what the differential between the old tower and the new tower, and you can uh, see how value buy they are. Okay, I won't go into the show fact because we are a bit running short of time. Uh, but this link will be will be will be will be shared among the taggers, uh, 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 so they can share with you uh, the link because Marina One like is always about the numbers, numbers and history and the development, and everything layouts. We can explain to you more or less they look the same, uh, in a way. Uh, okay, uh, just to add on a little bit, uh, our taggers within Downtown Core are doing the same projects. So Marina One residents 
Taggers are also doing Wallach Residence, are also doing South Beach, and they are also doing Midtown Bay. So when you are looking for a tagger for, because the chances of you coming to view Marina One Residence, you won't take a buyer down to one project and say, hey, buy this, buy this, buy this. They need to do comparison, right? So you look for one tagger, the tagger will arrange. You don't need to headache. So it's a one day you take out four projects and then your buyer will make a same decision. Yeah. So very easy, look for one tagger. The tagger are all very well trained, uh, very well uh, get with information. Yeah. And then they'll take you around uh, for this uh, four project tour, I would say. Okay. So D1 and 2 price comparison. Uh, currently, we have PSF from 2170. Okay. 2170. As you compare to all the projects within the area, uh, you know, we are comparing the historical high. We are very, very far off the historical high. Uh, you will probably ask, why am I comparing historical high? Uh, because now in, in this D1 and 2, we are counted low. Okay, and I want to show you what it can potentially grow to uh, in, during the high times. Okay, also compare with the current project's pricing in terms of the spectrum, where Marina 1 is also currently priced at. Yeah. Okay, uh, this is just a graphical view on the previous slide. Uh, we are from 12170. As you can see, most of them are most, mostly hitting at least 2800 uh, 2008 onwards, all the way to about you know, even, even 4000 plus per square foot historical high. Okay, and I broke it down into even their one bedrooms. Okay, currently our one bedrooms are from 2194 per square foot. Sorry. And we are always talking about per square foot in Marina, in, in the downtown core area, because the investors are always looking at, at per square foot value, per square foot value. They shouldn't say, hey, how much is your property in terms of one term? They are always working with per square foot. They are very per square foot sensitive. That's why we are in this area, we are always talking about per square foot, per square foot, per square foot. Okay. And, and, and looking at the surroundings, we are very, very much below, uh, uh, not even close in terms of the historical high. Even for the two bedrooms, as you can see, uh, all these slides were already shared by Tammy. So I will just briefly go through for those who have seen it. Uh, for those who haven't, uh, 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 you can get the slides will be out soon. Uh, we are still very much below uh, uh, the historical high, which is why Marina One Residence has been flying off the shelf because of its low entry price. Three bedroom two. Okay. So in terms of the spectrum, this is uh, due to current prices. Marina One residence sits on the lower end of the spectrum, uh, considering that you know Marina Bay residence is 10 years old and is also priced more expensive than Marina One. Uh, you know, we are quite close to the sale, uh, or even Marina Bay Suites, which is about seven years old and even 12 years old. Yeah, and, and Marina One residence is only uh, three years old compared to other, other districts within the area uh, in uh, RCR, sorry, OCR, RCR, sorry. Yeah, we are also on the lower, or lower, lower, lower part of the spectrum, which is still very at affordable in terms of the per square foot entry price. Yeah, and then compared to RCR, we are still compared, uh, we are still very, very affordable. Uh, I will go more into details in terms of the per square foot later. So yes, uh, this is a data pull from URA. Uh, it goes to show on, on, on the left here, it shows that the district, the district which the most popular lease amount of rentals that's going out throughout every year. And district one and two has the most number of leases uh, uh, every year so when your when your investors come in uh, they always ask rentable or not rentable or not because without rental your value also won't go up i mean without demand of rental uh, investors will be worried to put their money in there so yeah this slide is very powerful you should show them that how much demand how much uh, uh, rental transactions are being transacted in district one and two this is the highest lease ratio you know in the area okay and of course, there's a huge demand on the right here for smaller units preferred. This is just a data. 
uh, to show them how what kind of uh, units are being rented out every year. Okay, uh, like Tammy shared earlier, mixed development always command very good per square foot rental. Uh, and, and, and Marina One residents, you know, fetches about $5.2 per square foot rental per month. Common questions. We'll go more into details of the per square foot per unit per price. Uh, does newer development mean higher price? Does higher floor means higher price too? How do you know it's the right time? Will developer cut further on price? Because you already done a price adjustment last October. How to spot the right unit to invest? This is very, very important. Okay, uh, just to check you back a little bit on history. Uh, they launched in 2014. As you can see in my this red color circle over here, uh, these are the levels the, the uh, investors were buying back in 2014 during the new launch phase, okay? And now currently our asking prices on the right here in the oval are the current prices, okay? We are almost at the same level. Why? Because uh, M plus S really, really want to sell their units. So we are actually buying at 2014 prices, which is almost at new launch prices. And for some cases, like Lucy, uh, uh, 2019, okay, currently our asking price for a two bedroom, 2975 compared to a, compared to a, a unit that's transacted to $3,200 per square foot. We are still under the previous transaction, which in 2019. Due to the price adjustment last year in October, uh, this has brought in many attention to new investors and buyers to the uh, to the development. Hence, it was flying off the shelf. Yeah, this is also another 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 scenario. Uh, they are buying at two three thousand two to two thousand nine per square foot. Okay, currently we are transacting. We are asking at two thousand seven hundred dollars and 2,900, okay? You will see two prices on the price guide and price list, okay? The top one usually is the deferred payment scheme. The bottom one is the normal payment scheme, okay? There's a 3% differential when you pay normal payment scheme. But of course, deferred also helps for a lot of uh, buyers uh, in terms of cash flow. Uh, so sometimes you don't mind paying the 3% extra uh, to free up their cash flow. Okay, uh, this is just a side map of the uh, garden tower. Okay, uh, we are, this is park and this is garden. Okay, current gully garden are the number of units, the more number of units that's being sold. Okay, and on this side, is actually the Marina Station Square and also the sea view. On this side, you will see Marina Bay Financial Center, but it's still quite far away. So in terms of the view, it's still quite unblocked. Okay, later uh, there'll be some views on, uh, from the unit, I'll show you to you. Okay, uh, just to brief a little bit more, the one bedrooms are all facing on the inside. Okay, all this is outside. Okay, all this is outside and this is inside. When you're inside, you will look into the office. Okay, you will see Facebook. If you're lucky, you can even see Mark Zuckerberg sometimes. Uh, yeah, so this is the inside view. These are predominantly the one bedroom. Okay, the green color stacks from 20, 21, 22, 23, 30 and 31. Okay. This is a, it's still a very beautiful view if you ask me because the architect has built a wonderful job. Uh, so yeah, the views facing inside is actually quite nice. You also even have a garden view in the center, uh, which is quite amazing actually. So yes, one bedroom. Uh, I'm comparing to the past transaction and to the current asking, okay? In 2018, if you look on this transaction on the right, uh, 2018 transacted about $2,600 per square foot for a 10 floor unit. Okay. And my current, my current 21 floor, okay, 11 floors up, you are getting almost $400 per square foot off. I never heard of a project, uh, you go up 400 units, for 11 floors up, you get $400 per square foot cheaper. Yeah, yeah. So I think that is really, really, really a very good entry price. Uh, if you want, you can even go to 1913, 1930, you are buying at 2194 per square foot. Yeah. In Marina One residence, uh, doesn't mean the lowest quantum means the lowest uh, per square foot. 
Yes, because uh, the they have different sizes for the one bedroom. They vary from about seven seven five to seven eight six or seven hundred. Sorry, seven hundred to seven eight six per uh, square feet. So they vary in price in terms of the per square foot. Now this is just another example. Uh, two thousand eighteen, they committed some buyers committed at two thousand five hundred, almost two thousand six hundred per square foot. The quantum is almost 1.87, but now our current asking for a 25th floor. Our 25th floor is only 2293. Our 25th floor, which is the higher, more of the higher spectrum uh, units, are only transacting, only asking at $2,293 per square foot. Yeah. So actually, you buy higher floor, you're transacting lower. What's your risk? Yeah. You are saving more than $300 per square foot compared to someone. Uh, uh, who bought it on the lower floor. And, and, and we're talking about fourth and fifth floor. The lowest floor in Marina One residence is actually fourth floor. The highest is 32. Okay. Uh, the best buy currently, uh, this will also be sent out. You can get it from our taggers. Uh, the slides will also be available in VO. Okay. Uh, the best quantum, the best quantum will be 1323. Okay. The lowest quantum, doesn't mean the lowest per square foot. So it depends on your buyer. Okay. Uh, it sits at 1.639 and 2274 per square foot. Okay. Uh, stack 23 is here. You're looking to the office towers here. Okay. If your investor is very per square foot sensitive, you can also look at 1930, which is here. They are at 2194 per square foot uh, normal payment scheme. Of course, the one plus study, which is also very popular. Okay, they are all highlighted in yellow on the side map. Okay, this is also the view coming from Stack 29. We have a pocket view of uh, the Great Southern Waterfront City. Uh. Okay. Uh, the amazing thing about the, the, the one plus study is also very popular. Why? As you can see, these are all the current asking prices. Okay, on the we are using apple to apple comparison in terms of the floor level. On the 21st floor, uh, a one blast study at 753 square feet okay, is only asking, it's only the price is only at 1.728. Okay, and if you look at the one bedroom, which is slightly bigger, 775 square feet, but it's just a natural one bedroom, uh, you know, they are 1.723. Yeah, so for five thousand dollars more, you know, why don't you just buy a one plus study? Yeah, you can also rent it out as a two bed. You might even fetch a uh, higher, 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 higher rental. Yeah, so uh, the one plus study is a very popular unit. Uh, a lot of uh, promise agents has brought their buyers in to pick up the one plus study. Okay, the two bed. The two bed. There's only one here at the corner, which is the uh, highlighted and pink. Yeah, so comparing to the previous buyers who were transacting at about 2005, 2005 per square foot back in 2018, due to the price adjustments, now we are only hovering at that 2297 per square foot. Yeah, it's almost a $300 savings per square foot. I mean, seriously, every unit type, it's not just one unit type, it's cheap. That everybody goes for the same unit type. Uh, in, in Marina, they have done the price adjustment for all the unit types, except for the four bedroom, which is slightly less, uh, lesser discount because they were very high demand. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, we're talk not talking about $20 per square foot cheaper. We're talking about 300, 400, some even $500 per square foot difference. Yeah. So it, it's not like a, a, a 10, $20 per square foot difference, you know, just to tempt the buyer and the buyer comes down and you know, can't really make a decision. And it's very clear cut. It's a $300 off a previous transaction. So the, 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 the data is very clear. Which is why uh, in MOA, we always sell numbers, 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 and more numbers. So yes, two plus study. We have predominantly two views. Uh, this is the uh, stack 32, 33, 34. Uh, we are looking to MBFC, which is here, this blue building on the left. Okay, And we still do see uh, Marina Bay Sands on stack 34 and 33. Okay, 32, I don't think so. When I was there the last time, no, I couldn't see anything uh, Marina Bay Sands. 
So yeah, so some some of the buyers who come in to you know they don't pay the prime stack of uh, uh 26, 27, they, they actually take an alternative and look at a uh, you know 33 and 34. But actually, when 33 and 34, you do get a nice perspective of the uh, Marina Bay Sands uh, instead of looking out from uh, 26, 27. So yeah, two plus study. Okay, I'm showing you the difference between the prices from the MBFC view, which is the MBS, and the C view here, okay? The MBFC view now is currently holding at $2,331 per square foot, okay? And for the Marina Bay, sorry, for the C view, which is the stack 2627, they are hovering at 278. As you can see here, the price difference is $457 per square foot. You ask yourself, which one will you buy? Which one will you buy? For $500 per square foot difference, you will definitely buy, you will definitely take, you still can see the MBS view. So most buyers actually pick 32, 33, 34, despite facing the MBFC, but they still can get to see the MBS view. Yeah, it's almost $500,000 saving. But despite saving that, of course, some, some buyers still insist on buying stack 26, 27, which is the C view. Yes, and the C view, uh, I would say it will last for the next at least eight to 10 years. After that, I believe government has plans to have buildings all over the, in front. Three plus study, they are all facing the unblocked sea view. Yes, and you can see Marina Bay Sands still on the left, which is a similar facing as the stack 26, 27 for the two plus study. Okay, uh, this is quite an amazing transaction. Our current, our current asking price is 2170, okay? Uh, that's why you always say, Marina One Residence is transacting from 2170, which is actually the three bedroom, the three bedroom, three plus study uh, per square foot at 2170, okay? For 23rd floor, previously transacted before the price adjustment, okay? They transacted at 2950 per square foot. That's 718, a whooping $780 per square foot difference for a, a, a differential of 17 floors. That's $1.2 million savings. And, 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 and for sixth floor unit, uh, because it's so unblocked, right? You still can actually see the sea view from the sixth floor. I've been there myself and the sea view is still, still quite calming at, on, on the sixth floor. So yeah, for $1.2 million, it is, it's quite a no-brainer if you ask me. Four bedroom, this is very auto sell. Uh, uh, most of the foreign buyers, they always come in, see the, see the, see, see the unblocked view of the Marina Bay Sands and the sea view because it's a corner. Uh, you do get a, a, a kind of like a one one two one, two seven TV kind of panoramic view. Uh, hence, uh, and the space is really big, two thousand over per square foot size, uh, and that's our most popular unit. Okay, I want to compare. Our four bedrooms are actually still quite well priced comparison from the park tower and garden tower. Okay, currently my chart below is actually Park Tower, which is the previous tower, Tower 21, okay? They are still priced at $2,600 per square foot, okay? 26XX, two, two okay? The quantum is still about 5.4 million, okay? Uh, if, you, if you look at Tower 23 on the 23rd floor, there's a differential of about $470 per square foot difference. Yeah, so, you know, there's still value buys within Park Tower, actually. Uh, you do get a bit further, you no? Know? I mean, we are in Stack 8. Uh, most, most buyers like the Stack 8 because of the Stack. Uh, we are a bit further from MBS, but hey, 1.16 million differences, are, I mean, are some, some might actually, you know, think that it's worth the savings. Yeah. So the normal, I'll brief a little bit about the normal payment scheme and deferred payment scheme. Okay, normal is 1990 and the deferred is 11980. Okay, the difference is the deferred payment, you do get your unit three weeks from the exercise date. Both, both schemes still need to exercise. Okay, we don't have extended option, uh, all still need to be exercised. So ABSD, SS, uh, ABSD, SD still need to be paid, uh, you know, in the near future. Okay, uh, the good thing is the deferred payment scheme. 
you can actually get the unit in three weeks time. You can actually rent it out immediately already. And you only pay the rest of the 80% from 12 months of the exercise date. A lot of investors like this because of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the cash flow, uh, they will ease up their cash flow. Okay. Uh, but please note, there's a price differential between normal and deferred payment is 3%. Yeah. So it depends on what kind of buyers you are looking for. You have to understand the deferred payment scheme and then you have to, you can offer, to, offer to their needs. Okay. So yeah, I've already shown you all the numbers. Uh, can you see this is a very good buy? Uh, really, 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 really uh, affordable. Uh, as you can see from all the closings, uh, in fact, we are, we, we the ICs were joking. Uh, we hope that we hope the the, the, the the circuit breaker don't end because we are, you know, Marina One residence is selling uh, uh, more than uh, before, and we are really, really happy and very very grateful that uh, all the Promax people has been bringing uh, their buyers to show this wonderful project. And then, and then thank you very much. Okay. Uh, so there's a golden opportunity with the current price because we are really almost selling as previous uh, at launch price. Uh, timing is the essence, which is definitely now, can collect rental immediately, okay? Because a lot of people, a lot of buyers still want to, they don't like, wow, oh, I must wait the three years TOP, and then you can rent out, you know? But for Marina One, because it's really completed, you can rent out immediately. So there is instant yield, despite it being a new project. Okay, the risks are definitely minimized. As you can see, you're buying higher floors, but still, per square foot entry price is still cheaper than the lower floors. Of course, the transformation, the greatest transformation in Singapore, which is the great southern waterfront city. Okay, and of course, buying a Singapore history. Okay, I end my presentation. I really appreciate everyone for listening in. Thank you very much. I'll hand over to Jean. Uh,